All right, guys, um, this is Miss Miller. I figured we could do some practice free response question. Um, this is the 2012 uh, AP exam. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the free response questions. Um, I chose this because I feel like they cover a lot of information that could give you a good review of some topics, some easy, some difficult. So remember, you have 60 minutes. And um, this is the first free response question. So what I would encourage you to do is if you pause this right now, you can keep it on the screen and you can sit with a blank sheet of paper and you can answer the question. So go ahead and pause it. And then after you're done, press play. And I'm going to do the question with you and walk you through the response. So hit pause. Okay. So that should have taken hopefully around 20 minutes. I mean, they say to plan for about 30 minutes for the first free response question, but I would love for you guys to be in the 20 to 25 minute range. Um, not to rush, but just to make sure that you're not running out of time on the other aspects of the exam. So what I'm going to do is I, in order to write on the screen, I'm going to have to bounce this over to PowerPoint in a second. So um, bear with me on not seeing the question the whole time. It says, assume the country of Rankin land is currently in a recession. So that's a really important phrase, uh, currently in recession, because we're going to need that information for something, I'm sure. It says, A, assume Rankin land produces only food and clothing. Draw a correctly labeled production possibilities curve for Rankin land. Show the point that could represent the current output and label it A. So if I hop over here to this screen where I can draw on it, for part A, I would do your PPC curve, they said food and clothing, and we're going to draw that concave curve, and then a recession would be a point under the line. Remember that a recession is not a shrunken PPC. Some of you guys tended to do this during the course, and we talked about how that was actually a false representation. Um, and the reason why is because the PPC shows you limits. So this is the limit of clothing that we can produce. And this is the limit of food. So a shrunken PPC would imply that we're meeting our limits, except that our limit is here instead of out here. Um, and that's a false impression. We don't want to give the reader that impression. So don't put these dotted lines in there. You just want to put that spot hovering underneath the curve. And again, you're, you're saying to the reader, a recession is when we are operating in a point that is under our level of full employment. So I'm going to go back to the question. Here's the second part. There's four things to do. Assume that the Central Bank of Rankin Land pursues an expansionary monetary policy. So first of all, Central Bank is a key to understanding that this is about monetary policy. And so they also put it in the sentence and they tell you expansionary. Clearly, it's going to be expansionary because the country is currently in a recession. So expansionary would make sense. I would think that you could figure that out. Um, I would think even if they said, assume the central bank of ranking land chooses to intervene, that you should be able to know that it's monetary policy because it says central bank and that it's going to be expansionary because we're in a recession. So part one says identify the open market operation that the central bank would use. So in order to expand the economy, the central bank would buy bonds so identifying means just to simply state buying bonds. Now here comes the graphing. For part two, draw a correctly labeled money market graph to show the short run effect of expansionary monetary policy on the nominal interest rate. Assuming no change in the price level, what happens to the real interest rate as a result of the monetary policy? Explain. Given your answer in part B, Part three, regarding the real interest rate, what happens to the real gross domestic product in the short run? Okay, so let's first just draw the graph. So the money market graph, hopefully you guys remember, um, it's a fun one. I kind of like the money market graph. The money market graph has the demand for money here and the supply of money and we know that the supply of money is going to move to the right because it's expansionary. 
I'm just going to mark that there. I'm going to put my Y here, Y1. This is our nominal interest rate. This is our new interest rate. And here you have interest rate. So this would be the correct answer for part B, part two. So what about the real interest rate? If the nominal interest rate has decreased, would the real interest rate decrease as well? Let's go back to the question. So I'm just going to hit escape. I'm going to go back to the question. Assuming no change in price level. So if you remember, if you think about your ADAS graph and you remember where price level is, inflation is when price level increases. So if there's no change in price level and all of a sudden nominal interest rates are lower, what's going to happen to the expansionary? What's the, uh, what's the effect of the expansionary policy? So I'm just going to go over to the rubric so you can see on part three here. Oh, there's our beautiful graph. We were correct. Um, it says one point is earned for stating that the real interest rate will fall. So again, like I just said, if there's no change in price level and inflation is when price level increases. So if you had an increase in price level and nominal price level or nominal interest rates would be affected. Um, but now we have no change in price level. So the real interest rate also fell. One point is earned for explaining that with the price level remaining constant when nominal interest rates fall, the real interest rate also falls. Last but not least, let's go back to the question. Given your answer in part B, part three, regarding the real interest rate, what happens to the gross domestic product in the short run? Well, if interest rates are lower, then interest sensitive consumption will probably increase. So if I'm thinking about the ADAS graph and I take that little aggregate demand line and I shift it to the right as a result of more interest sensitive consumption, then real GDP should increase as well. So now it says one point is earned for stating that the real GDP will increase in the short run, explaining that either investment or consumption increases, causing aggregate demand to increase. Fantastic. Last part of the question. Now we get into the international trade. Suppose Rankin Land has a current account deficit. If you guys remember the current account and the capital account, the current account is where our imports and our exports are included here, okay? And the currency in Rankin Land is called the Barra. What will initially happen to the current account deficit in Rankin Land solely due to the change in real GDP from Part B? Explain. So we have to do two things here. We have to identify what's going to happen. We have to explain. And then we have to explain what's going to happen to the international value of the Barra. So this, this part of the question, I think, requires you to do a little bit more higher order thinking and, and really connect the, the, second, the first part to the second part. So if we go to what we have on our rubric here, this whole section is worth four points. And that makes sense to me because if I look at the question again, it says, identify and explain, or what will happen and explain. So you're probably getting one point for saying what will happen, one point that will, for saying uh, your explanation. So one point is stating that the current account deficit will increase. So again, it's Rankin Land who has the deficit. Their currency is called the Barra. What's going to happen to their current account deficit? Current account deficit, when I'm importing more than I'm exporting, or I'm exporting more than I'm importing. It says, one point is earned for explaining that the increase in real GDP in increases income, which causes imports to increase and net exports to decrease. So, by increasing the real GDP, we have more income, and therefore rank and land citizens are going to demand more goods and services, particularly imports. Now, what happens to the value of your currency when there is a current account deficit? Well, it decreases. One point is earned for stating that the international value of the bearer will decrease. 
One point is earned for explaining that the decline in the international value of the bara is due to an increase in the supply of the bara. So if you think about it, there's more income out there, therefore they're spending more money. So the supply of this country's currency has shifted to the right, therefore decreasing its value on the foreign exchange market. Fantastic. I would say this part is the toughest part of the question because international trade is something that we did last. And um, I think that when we get towards the end of a course, we're, we're trying to squeeze everything in. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was tough. So if that was tough for you, I would go back and I would look, read some stuff about the current account and the capital account and how the current account and exchange rates are related.